Hey guys, Professor Yerby here with you. Today I'm going to be discussing the difference between POP3, IMAP, and Exchange. So I'm going to use an article from howtogeek.com uh, to go through and give you some visuals while I'm talking about the differences. So one thing I thought was interesting right from the start, they show this device up here that many of you probably have never heard of. It's It was uh, one of the first smartphones that was probably used by your grandparents or your great-grandparents. It was called a BlackBerry. It was kind of like the Android or iPhones that, that you use today, um, but it's just really, really old. And if you look really hard, sometimes you'll still see somebody using one of these devices. They just haven't gotten the memo that this is gone. Anyways, just kidding about that. Um, what we're going to talk about is email. So I'll just go through the order that the uh, article here on howtogeek.com uses. Uh, so first they want to compare an email client to webmail. So your email clients are going to be things like your Outlook, Outlook Express. If you're working if you're working in the new uh, Windows 8 or 8.1 operating system, they have a built-in email client. It's just called Mail. But all of those are clients. Here you have Thunderbird. It's offered by Mozilla. Uh, that's the same people that make your Firefox browser. So the way a client works is you install the software on a machine and then you set your email accounts up. So right here, I'll have most of the screen blurred out when you see this, but here I have I have um, an email client. So I'm using Outlook 2003 and this is where I can check email you see over here that I have multiple inboxes, multiple sent, delete items. So for me, I have three separate accounts that are created here on this machine. I'll have these blurred out, but there's three separate email accounts here. And I'll show you the first one. So I can do things. I can send receive. I can organize things into folders. I can view them. Uh, these accounts are different types of accounts. So if you look here, uh, I have my first account. It's my college account. It's on a Microsoft Exchange. We'll talk about Exchange in just a moment. And then I also have an IMAP uh, account here. And we'll talk about what that is in a moment as well. All right. So that's an email client. The way it works is you install some software on a machine, and then the messages are downloaded, and you interface with them there. The other option is a web client. So this would be things like your Gmail, Hotmail, uh, Yahoo. So if you want to check your emails, you just go to that website. You can check your emails. Now the, the line between these have been blurred because you can get your web mail through email clients now. Uh, but the traditional method is this is going to be checked online on the web by going to their website. And you don't have to download anything. So here's a here's an image of what Gmail would look like. Here's an image of what Thunderbird would look like. And remember, Thunderbird is one of our clients, right? And let's see. Now we're going to get to POP3, which is the post office protocol. The three is just uh, the version. Uh, but you may you may hear people just call this POP. Um, either pop pop three is the same thing when you're speaking with someone uh, it uses an older model of offline email uh, so the way that pop three would work is you would have an email server and you would have clients Let's see if I can draw this out real quick okay so this is my server over here uh, to the the left Right, that's my server, and then all of these are my clients. And there it is. The server would get messages from all over the world, get emails, and it would store them until the client was ready to make a connection to the server and say, this is who I am, here's my credentials, here's my username and password, I want to pick up my messages. So, again, it's called the post office protocol. So think of this kind of like a P.O. box. It's holding, it's holding all of the mail. It's holding all of the messages until 
until this guy makes a connection, validates his credentials, authenticates, goes to the post office, says, I want all of my mail. Post office says, sure, here's all of the mail we have, sends it down to this client's email uh, client. So he has his email. And what's left on the server is just whatever other people haven't downloaded yet. So same thing happens. He's holding all the messages for client two until client two says, I want my messages. Client two takes their messages. So that's that's how POP3 works. It it's good for it's good for the server because it deletes all of those messages so it doesn't require as much space to run a POP3 server as it will to run what's in, it's called an IMAP server. We'll talk about that in just a moment. Uh, the disadvantage is, say this guy, he's downloaded his messages, but for some reason, his computer dies, gets stolen, he loses it. He buys a new computer eventually, but all of his messages that were on that original device, they're gone. They're not on the brand new device, and they're not on the email server, because this was a POP3 email server. When he downloaded those messages, he took them off of the server. Now I'll say that, but there is a huge caveat with this. When you're configuring your POP3 email in your email client in Outlook, Outlook Express, Mail, uh, Thunderbird, when you're configuring that, there is an option that says keep this many messages or this amount of data on the POP3 server. So I always go with that option just to give me some semblance of a backup in case that happens where I lose this device or I just happen to throw it away or blow it away or whatever I do. So I like to do that. I like to create a, a backup here. The server, from the server side, they don't like it because now even when this person did download their messages, a copy is still stored on the server uh, depending on the amount of data or amount of space that you've allocated to each email box or maybe the how old it is so maybe i say keep everything for three months or keep everything for one year so that's pop three great for one device but who has just one device nowadays All right uh, the next thing is imap it's internet messaging access protocol uh, this one uh, what it does contrasting it to the pop three where the mail stays here until it's delivered in IMAP, the mail is on the server, it stays on the server. When a client connects, what he's doing is he's viewing the data that's on the server. He's interacting with the server. So this is more of a two-way communication uh, because what's happening uh, for the client is happening on the server. So he's in a location where he doesn't have internet access. He may not be able to access those. Uh, emails if they haven't saved a cached copy uh, on his device. So IMAP is much more convenient for uh, places where you're going to be moving around to multiple devices and you might want to read an email now and then also be able to read it later from a different device. So this is becoming you know, more common than POP3. And uh, the caveat with this one, again, is you'll see that you're limited by the amount of space that you can store on that email box, depending on who the service provider is. So companies like Google and Yahoo, they really want your business. Um, it's webmail. You can get your information through IMAP, uh, but they'll give you a pretty large email inbox. But eventually, you'll run out. But if you're working for a company or if you're a student at a school, then you'll probably see much smaller limits on the amount of uh, information you're allowed to st store in your inbox. Then we get down to Exchange. Exchange uh, is more, more like uh, IMAP. Um, let's see. It's the king of email servers. It has been for a really long time, and it's, it's out there. So Exchange is its own protocol. 
it operates kind of like the best of both POP and IMAP. Uh, you usually want to use a client. I always like to use uh, Microsoft Outlook to work with my Microsoft Exchange. Um, you can you can sync your uh, other devices, your Android and iPhone devices, using Active Sync. It works in the background. It's built into both of those operating systems. Uh, when the iPhone first came out, it was kind of a big deal to be able to get Exchange email on your iPhone. Uh, when it was first out, they're saying. Well, we're not going to support that. Who uses Exchange? But the real world hit them and they said, oh, well, yeah, we've got to find a way to do that. So so that works. Uh, I'm not sure if we go back to this, this ancient technology up here, Blackberries. I think that they might be able to receive emails. Uh, I don't know. Just stay away from those things. And uh, let's see. And, yeah, that's it. So uh, just a summary here. Uh, if you plan to check your email from a lot of devices, phones, or computers, set up your clients to use IMAP or Exchange. Um, if you use mostly webmail, you want your phone IMAP to sync with your webmail, use IMAP. If you're using one client, use POP3. If you have a huge history of email, you want to keep POP3. Um, Hotmail or Exchange server. Uh, will give you similar cloud-based syncing like IMAP. If you don't want to use Hotmail and it with email sync, use IMAP. If you do use it and want to email sync, use Exchange Active Sync. So, anyways, I hope you enjoy the tutorial and you um, more fully understand the difference between POP3, IMAP, and Exchange Server. Thanks. Have a great day.